Morning everyone. We're just going to have a little listen through to the very short and brief statement that uh, Mr. Rattray. Now, he's the guy supposedly um, representing his client, Dr. or Dr. Mangler. Selwyn Leakes, he's known as. And bear in mind, he's telling you all of these terrible things that Dr. Leakes is going through. Like, we're supposed to give a fuck for a start. This man is single-handedly guilty without any measure of any doubt. This prick is guilty of torturing, I'll say 100, and that's being generous, but well over 100 children in the 70s because of botched up governments, botched up police inquiries. You know, they interviewed 50 so many staff member and one victim back in their initial inquiry. So they botched up their things. For Selwyn Leakes to get away from any problems, he resigned from the Medical Council of New Zealand. So they had no power over him anymore. Moves to Australia with a recommendation from the Medical Council and repeats the process over there. Okay, so let's have a listen to what Mr. Rattray has to say. Okay. Mr. Rattray, I invite you uh, to introduce yourself and uh, make any submissions you wish. Thank you. Kia ora, Your Honour, Tenako. Kia ora, Kato Kato. My name's Rattray. Rattray, is that just your name, is it? You can't even say your first name, which is Hayden. You can't do that. You just expect it to come up on the board and everyone would be happy with it. Well, that's not a very good opening. But we'll continue. And I appear for Dr. Selwyn Leakes. Dr. Leakes was designated a core participant in this matter on the 23rd of April, 2021. And why? Why was he designated a core participant? He should be designated the fucking offender. Core participant in this inquiry? What, so the inquiry is supposed to all of a sudden do better than the New Zealand police and government, which of course they are, but they're, they're supposed to, I mean, they have no authority to charge anyone. All they can do is write a review and a report and recommend, which can be ignored just like the other 20 reports and recommendations that have happened throughout the years. So how much clout does the Royal Commission actually have? short of it going out onto their website, which they control and can kill at any time, so no one will see the public stuff. This is why I capture it all, and I keep hard copies of everything I capture, and put up on YouTube and other formats for everyone to see. Moving on, though. He was assessed by Dr. Sarah Lucas, a neuropsychologist, on the 30th of March, 2021. And she produced a report dated the 7th of April, 2021. A copy of that report was provided to the Commission the following day. Dr Leakes is 92 years old. He has metastatic prostate cancer. Excellent. Thank fuck. It's called karma. Ischemic heart disease. Brilliant. Rock it on. More the merrier. Chronic kidney dysfunction. Excellent. I hope they fucking ship themselves right out. Should have happened, and in fact, couldn't have happened to a more evil fucker. Dr. Lucas notes in her report that Dr. Leakes's cognitive functioning is most likely suggestive of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's? Woohoo! And that his functional decline is also supportive of a diagnosis of dementia. Dementia. Okay, so let's put something into it. Because I kind of have a little bit of uh, first-hand knowledge of this. My mother was diagnosed with dementia last October. Now, my father has enduring power of attorney over her. If, and believe it or not, mum tried this when I was down there in January. She tried going to lawyers to get legal assistance. And you know what the lawyers said? Because you lack the mental capacity, you cannot instruct a lawyer. So, question being... Who has enduring power of authority over that fucking tyrant, fucking Dr. Leakes or Dr. Mangler? Who who has enduring power of attorney to tell this lawyer? Because 
Obviously, Dr. Leakes, with dementia and Alzheimer's, can't instruct anyone. He lacks the mental capacity to instruct a lawyer. So who's doing this? Where did this cunt come from? Moving on. As a core participant in this quarry, Dr. Leakes has the right to give evidence and to make submissions. But he is, by virtue of his age and cognitive capacity, manifestly incapable of doing either. Does he? Well, let's see him do that. Because the only time when he was asked if he felt sorry about doing this, all we got was, no, I don't think I do. The United Nations has found New Zealand breached the Convention Against Torture by failing to properly investigate abuse at Lake Alice Hospital in the 1970s. A victim took the case to the UN because the psychiatrist accused of electrocuting patients as punishment has never faced charges. It's a decision Paul Zinfeld's waited a lifetime for. This is um, a victory for the little people and the survivors. A United Nations judgment that authorities failed to properly investigate the treatment of children like Paul at Lake Alice Hospital in Manawatu. Repeated attempts to contact Leakes, who now lives in Australia, have been unsuccessful, but he's always denied wrongdoing. Do you apologise for anything? No, I don't think I do. But police decided there was insufficient evidence to prosecute. No matter what the government officials say, uh, torture on the testicles is pretty serious. New Zealand had violated its obligations to properly investigate Paul's claims of torture and had endorsed actions leading to impunity for Dr Leakes. Permanent burn marks on the underside of my penis. It sparked and I got a burn on the end of my penis. It's just another victory of telling people telling the truth. No, I don't think I do. He doesn't give a fuck. He's a psychopath. And so what? His mental decline has happened. Hook him up to some ECT. That should fix him up right, eh? Perhaps he needs some behavioural modification. You know, let's do that. Dr Leakes is neither aware of the matters before the inquiry nor cognitively capable of responding to them. While I represent him, I can't give evidence for him. How do you represent him if he's got fucking dementia and Alzheimer's? How are you legally allowed to even take instruction from him? Hmm? My awareness is not his, and any response that I could make to the matters levelled against him would be mine. The reality is that I represent a man incapable of instructing me. Exactly. <laughs> Represents a man incapable of instructing him. So what's he doing there? Who's, who's employed him to, to do anything? Who's, who's the one hiding behind the curtain? Who has enduring power of attorney over Dr. Selwyn Leakes? A man who is incapable of understanding this process and meaningfully engaging with it. Hook him up to some voltage. I'm sure he'll come alive. The very serious allegations that are the subject of this part of the inquiry are said to have occurred nearly half a century ago. When one considers that fact alone, it represents a significant challenge for this commission. No, it doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. You have overwhelming, unequivocal evidence from hundreds of victims that that prick, along with his little fucking mob squad of nurses, tortured children under the guise of aversion therapy behavioural modification, when it was purely for torture and punishment, and that sick, sadistic bastard's fucking own ego. And everyone knew about it. When one adds to that the statutory, statutory requirement for the Commission to comply with the principles of natural justice and fairness, the reality of the challenge is all the greater. Natural justice and fairness, like I said, Give him some fucking voltage. Up the amperage. I submit that the challenge can be overcome and that the work of the Commission can be done and natural justice and fairness observed. And to that extent, and to the extent that I can, I will endeavour to assist the Commission to do just that. He can't do anything. He knows no first-hand facts. He's rep supposedly representing someone that doesn't have the power, the mental capacity, to get a lawyer to instruct him. What a complete farce. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rattray. Um, thank you for your submission.
Um, are you going to continue to participate throughout the hearing or uh, what, what, what do you intend to do, just so that we know to be ready for you? Certainly, uh, Your Honour, I've got um, an open line of communication with the staff at the Commission who have been extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. um, given my circumstances in Melbourne, I had hoped to be with, all, with you all there. Mm -hmm. um, the proposal, as I understand it, is for me to view the proceedings um, through the um, live stream. Through the live stream. This will be the same live stream that you watch, and whenever something gets brought up they don't like, oh, we'll be back soon. You get a hold screen come up. Things get muted because they've already gotten the written testimonies. These people are rereading their written testimonies, and whenever they hit something they don't like, you get a blank screen. So, yeah, live stream. That might be great for people that are actually watching a genuine live stream, but when that live stream is controlled and blanked out and muted to the general public, well, again, so much for transparency, eh? It's disgusting. And for me to communicate in advance if I seek to make any submissions, and could I ask that if the Commission or any Council wish to contact me, I'm available. Um, and if submissions are sought from me, um, I'm more than happy to make myself available. Um, I, I would just need some notice to prepare myself and um, for the appearance, that's all. Some notice, really, to, to prepare himself. He's going to be getting no information from someone with dementia who is ranked. And of course, let's look at those arms of, of the prosecutor. There has to be evidence and then they have to look at the, the public interest factor. And the part of the public interest factor is whether that gentleman can be held for trial. He can't. He ain't a gentleman for a start, but that maggot cannot be held accountable because of his mental state now. So I say, well, fuck, let's just give him electrocutions. You know, start with his fucking balls, just for Paul's fucking relevance. Start with torching his fucking nuts. Electrocute his legs. Give him proaldehyde in his ass cheeks so he can't sit down without pain. Let's do all those wonderful things that he thought were perfectly okay to children, to him. But no, then we would be torturing people. That would be wrong, wouldn't it? In a way, it's karma. But in another way, it's disgusting. And for this prick, Rattray, his name is, to get up there and say, I can't fucking speak for him, I can't make any... Well, duh, we all fucking know that. What a wanker. See you later. And, and this prick said, please don't make any fucking judgments on, on leaks. That's why Paul had to walk out. And you see that on TVNZ. The lawyer for Selwyn Leakes, the former psychiatrist accused of torturing children at Lake Alice Hospital, has asked an inquiry to state, into state abuse not to make adverse findings against his client. But one of those tortured says the submission was disrespectful and he had to leave the room. At the final day of the hearing, survivors presented a united front, grateful they'd finally been listened to and believed. Commissioners had heard allegations of rape, seclusion and torture, dressed up as therapy. The darkness and shame we have carried has begun to lift in the light of exposing the truth. At the centre of submissions from survivors, the brutal conduct of Dr Selwyn Leakes. To the survivors you spoke of unimaginable horrors that no child should have to go through. The Crown is not here to defend the conduct of Dr Leakes or any practices that amounted to punishment under the guise of medical treatment. But Leakes's lawyer told the inquiry his client is 94. Dr Leakes is 92 years old. His client is 94. with dementia and the focus should be on the myriad of failed investigations into complaints about leaks and Lake Ellis. In order for the Commission to make those findings, it need not make findings adverse to Dr Leakes. Survivor Paul Zentveld walked out midway through those submissions. It just makes me sick. It just makes me sick. Just my, my own for myself. I, I'm, I don't want to know. He says claims leaks can't be blamed due to his mental state are wrong. And disrespectful. Do you apologise for anything? No, I don't think I do. The inquiry was told that the stories of abuse and torture may sound like something out of a movie, but that this is no movie, it's just part of New Zealand's dark history. Whakarongo mai. Whakarongo mai. Finally, our voice has been heard.
At the centre of the Commissioner's deliberations, who should take responsibility? A question that will be addressed in a final report due early next year. Anyway, guys. Bye. Thank you.